The AI Pi Lite is basically a tiny AI companion, if you will. It can be your AI assistant, it can stick to stuff with its magnets, it can talk back to you, it can give you sass, it can be helpful, it can be friendly. What's even more fun is you can actually have it replicate different voices, whether it's your own or Gandalf or Dumbledore. Those are kind of the same person. Stewie from Family Guy, Yoda. Because it's small and you can stick it to anything, you can kind of make any inanimate metal object have character, which is kind of funny. So that's what it is in a nutshell. It's a little way of reaching AI on the internet in a small little form factor, a little chat bot, if you will. But today we're gonna look into more of the details of what this is, how it works, and to start, as we do always on this channel, we're gonna talk about the design and build. So, if you're a techie or you like tinkering with different hardware and software and stuff, you'll probably notice this is basically just a Raspberry Pi. For those who don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's like a little tiny computer this size, this is literally like the size of a Raspberry Pi that you can use for tons of different things. People will use them as part of bigger projects or they'll use them for, I mean, literally anything. It's a tiny little powerful computer they continue to sort of update and iterate on. You'll see this one has a USB-C port, for instance. And to be honest with you, I don't know a lot about Raspberry Pi. I just know it when I see it. Plus, this is called AI Pi kind of gives it away. Now what they've done here, as you can see, is they've just taken the actual Raspberry Pi and then added a screen to it, a couple buttons, and a little magnetic battery pack, which gives you the power to use it. They come in a few different colors. They're nice and bright and friendly. I think this is crossing that line between like assistant and helpful in the productivity world and also just being a fun toy to play around with. And sometimes it's fun to have tech like that. I honestly do like how simple it is. I like that it can fit in the palm of your hand. You can throw it in your pocket, in your book bag. You can stick it to things. It's got magnets. The form factor is great. I'm glad they didn't try to make this into something huge. I will say like there's not a ton of direction in the box on how to use these buttons, <laughs> but there's some setup instructions and we'll actually go over that here in a second. X Origin sent me out the yellow one and green one and it's kind of giving me like Game Boy Color vibes. I had the yellow one when I was growing up, my sister had the green one, so that's a funny little happy coincidence there, but you can just see how small they are. They're teeny. And we'll go ahead and get one booted up here so you can see. There's your screen, black and white, pretty standard, it scans for Wi-Fi, and now it's ready to go. It's in standby mode. So that's what it looks like when it's up and running. But let's go ahead and show you, because I think for a lot of people who love to tinker with stuff like this, this is gonna be fairly easy to set up, but I think for someone like, you know, my wife or my mom or some of my friends to be able to get this up and running and using it, it might be a little bit more difficult. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need the battery to be charged. You're gonna have to have a strong Wi-Fi network. So to turn it on, you click and then click and hold the left side button. And setup process is actually pretty loud. <laughs> so be aware of that when you're setting this up. It will say initializing. Enter the Wi-Fi configuration mode. So now what you have to do is go to your Wi-Fi here, wait for it to pop up. There it is. You actually have to click on your Wi-Fi and then type in the password. Hit connect and then wait, basically what you're doing. And there's other devices you may have used in the past like this. You connect it to your phone and then allow the phone to show the device what the Wi-Fi password is. Now it's gonna scan. Go ahead and turn my phone off here. Please log into the control panel to add the device. Enter the verification code. Now, Ten. this will keep saying this over and over again, <laughs> which is a little frustrating, but to show you how this all works. All right, so I had a little bit trouble setting this up and actually had to reach back out to them. So this is sort of your dashboard, which we'll go through here in a second. I wanna just get this set up. I have a few different things here. I've created a Yoda type thing, which I'm excited to try out. But basically you have to do adding devices, add the device, and it has to be done within the agent. The agents are those little like, we'll get there in a second, but let me go ahead so this thing will stop reading out these numbers to me over and over again. All right, once I confirm on the screen, the binding is complete. And now I basically, from what I've found, I turn the device off, which again is a short click, then a long click. Then I'm gonna do it again, short click, long click. It's gonna scan for Wi-Fi, and now it's ready to go. So that's how- 
now it's gonna upgrade the system apparently. <laughs> so you might have to do this as well. It might need to upgrade the software in here or the firmware. While that's happening, let's go ahead and look over at the screen here. So there's some things that are still in beta here like this developer community, it says coming soon. Um, over here, you're gonna have to have an activation code which just allows you to use this dashboard basically, and I guess the whole system, I was trying to put the binding code from the device in there and it wasn't working. You have this agent marketplace, which people have already started to upload a few different things here. So you can see basically an agent is the type of character that you're creating and that you wanna be able to talk to on a device. So you have someone who will help you plan your trip, a travel assistant, you have a super translator, you have emotional trash care can where you can just, vent into it and put all your troubles into it. And what's cool is if you click in here, you can see what the prompt is, how this person has set this up to sort of answer you, right? And in what way, what tone, what emotion. Now you can pick from any of these, which is really nice, or you can do something like I've done here. And I just recently did this, super simple. Application creation, you come in here, you name it, you pick your language, English and Chinese is all that's available, and you can pick your model of AI. So there's XOrigin, uh, Gemini, Azure, ChatGPT 4.1, and then Amazon Bedrock, uh, which I guess is a thinking model. Once you set that up, you can actually then come in here and configure your character which you kind of do in the setup process. So you can do a little bit more. You can have different templates here. You can pick what voice you want to use. I'm currently- Every great journey begins with a single step. I've got this Liam guy. And then this just says, this agent needs to respond the way that Yoda talks. That's all I've given it. Another interesting thing is down here at MCP expansion, you can basically allow this device to search the web. Right, so it can search on Google and do in-depth research on any topic. You can have this time server, which tells you the local time. You can do a calculator. I'm sure this list will get longer and longer as well. But then also the AI will have memory. So it'll remember what you've talked about. You can come in here and delete it if you want to. I find that AI having a memory is better for conversations and understanding who you are and that kind of thing, if you're into that kind of thing. But I actually haven't tried this out. I think the last very interesting feature about the functionality here is this sound reproduction. So in this panel here, you can upload your voice. You can upload, like I said earlier, Gandalf's voice or Yoda's voice or whoever you want. It will take a little bit of time, but it will actually learn the way that that character speaks and will replicate that sound coming out of here. So you can actually talk to Yoda if you want to. So you just click this little button here and then you start talking to it. Hey, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm just living the dream answering questions for strangers on the internet all day. Living proof that robots don't get weekends. Let me do this. Hey, can you turn up the volume? So anyway, you can see on here, you can turn the sound up and stuff like that. There's a certain certain voice commands. You can actually speak into it to update the actual settings here on the device, which is interesting. But um, when this is done upgrading here, we'll see if it speaks in Yoda speak. And then I actually, I just figured, so there's not a lot of like instruction in the product that sh shares how to do all this. And I'm, I'm assuming like, this is still very beta, very early on. They're gonna be adding to all of this and creating how-to videos and stuff like that. But um, right now there's a lot of just figuring it out, which I think is fun. But like I said earlier, the average consumer might have problems with that. But again, this is sort of early release, early model. So we might see all that change. So I was actually able to do the voice replication and I did it with my own voice and I added it to the sarcastic model on here, character on here, and my wife absolutely hated it. And so I was like, how can I make this fun for my daughter? Cause she thought it was hilarious. So I actually took a video off YouTube of Olaf from Frozen and uploaded that audio to the voice replication. And then I made the character Olaf. And I said, you're Olaf, you know, you're an Arendelle, you've, you know, Elsa and Anna and Sven and Kristoff. And I want you to be able to tell stories of being Olaf and things happening in Arendelle. And my daughter has had a blast with this. So let me just show you. The character here is Olaf and I uploaded Olaf's voice. So it feels very real and fun. And my daughter's had so much fun playing around with this. Hey Olaf, how are you doing today? Hi there. Oh boy! I'm feeling absolutely snowtastic today! The sun is shining, the snow is glistening, and I haven't melted once. How are you doing? Would you like to hear a fun 
fun story from Arendelle. Or maybe build a snowman together. I know a certain reindeer named Sven who would love to join us. So there you have it. There's Olaf in a tiny yellow form factor. And like I said, you can do this with any character. As long as you have some sample of their voice, you can upload that audio. And then in the character settings, you can just say, you are this character and I want you to speak to me in this way. I could even say like, be Olaf, but be mad all the time or be sad. And it could sort of live that out as well. So this is super cool. Uh, definitely a fun little gadget. It could be a fun little prank, something like that. But I did want to show off the sort of voice replication to show what that's capable of doing in that area. But yeah, I'm gonna continue to play with these. Last section here, who is this for? I've kind of hinted at it throughout the video, but I definitely think for like tinkerers who like to play around with tech, maybe if you've like done stuff with Raspberry Pi before, this could be cool for you, or maybe you've already done stuff like this. I don't really know that market or those types of people. I think it's crossing that line into like, if I could get this set up for my daughter, then she would probably have a lot of fun. Like if I could have it tell her like princess stories and stuff like that, it could be kind of like one of those Yodo players or one of those Tonys that you put the little characters on, you know? Like you could tell her fantasy, fairy tales and stuff like that. Or maybe you could set this up for like Bible memorization or Bible verses or like Bible trivia or any kind of trivia. I don't know, there's so much you could play around with and do here. And I think that's what's so fun about it. It is very open to whatever you want it to be, which is super cool. It does take a little bit of getting used to and figuring out, but at the end of the day, I think it's pretty fun. So thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to pick one up for yourself, we will put the links in the description down below for you to learn more and purchase one. Last thing, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, here we talk about tech that marries form and function. We like tech that improves our lives and looks good while doing so. So if that sounds cool to you, please subscribe and like this video for more. Thanks for watching. Watch this video next. I think you're going to love it. We'll see you all in the next one.